well, I know they're all tired and they all deserve our tissues refreshed, and I'm the one, and even the one standing between you, so we'll go quickly. So, that's irrelevant. <laughs> so, what about mega analysis? Well, we have developed it, Neda and I have developed it. Uh, to basically hom homogenize data across multiple data sets. So here we have three data sets and each of them, you know, while following normal distribution, really does not overlap with each other, which is awful. Well, what can we do? Well, we developed this protocol and coded it in Solar Eclipse, and we have tried it in a number of analyses, including the additive genetic analysis of heritability, and I'm sure we have annoyed pretty much every one of you guys asking to submit the data for one or another of those studies. And um, today I'll be specifically talking about applying this analysis where we have a disorder effect, such as the effect of schizophrenia on white matter. So again, we have... Uh, sort of uh, lack of homogeneity across data collected from multiple sites. And what we employ is a very basic property of the data and its, and its normality. So what we do, we perform inverse normalization, thereby matching the data to have the same overall bell-shaped curve, after which we pretty much assume that the data is equivalent from side to side. <coughs> That is, of course, done with some clever checks of which we shall speak nothing. <laughs> and uh, one thing that we have discovered so far is that uh, when you perform mega-analysis and meta-analysis, and when you look at the uh, sort of standard error and the significance, often but not always you can have improvement in both uh, standard error and uh, higher significance. But that does not happen always. Similar trends can be seen on voxelwise data. So those were all done in sort of normal population where we could have a good reason to assume that the data should be distributed normally. Can we do it in disordered population? And specifically in schizophrenia, which is uh, something that uh, is being cooked up right now, and we have the PI of the schizophrenia group uh, uh, right there. So what we decided to do is try to apply the mega-analysis to study the effects of disorder on the FA values, and we used three samples that were collected at my site, and the advantage of those samples was there were some crossover subjects who, you know, who participated in two or three of those samples. So here we looked at the effects per site. So on site one, we had 350 subjects and patients and controls actually, again, formed fairly nice normal curves, thereby giving us the permission to do the uh, mega, mega analysis as long as the effect size is the, is the same. And so we transformed them together on the one assumption of, the, of normality, and after we separated them, they still were normal. We observe very much the same picture from another site, connected at a different scanner, different uh, population group, albeit with some small overlap. And again, we observe that uh, we have independently patients and controls form normal, normally distributed uh, data, and transform significance produces about the same effect size. And then we looked into uh, yet another site that has a smaller number of uh, subjects and despite of that, we still were able to recover more or less normal distributions, and we still were able to get pretty much uh, the same effect size. So it was only reasonable for us to combine it all and perform a mega-analysis, and lo and behold, we have a really nice uh, effect size. And more importantly, we have this one large spreadsheet organized from three sites, across which we have data for every subject, and in that uh, spreadsheet, we basically can perform all sorts of combined analysis on the subject, such as covariate analysis, effects of medication, effects of uh, um, symptomatology, and so on and so forth. Fully really simplifies the methods. So, uh, one question was regional specificity. It's sort of a sore point in schizophrenia because everyone reports regional specificity and Almost every sample is unique, which makes it for relatively poor regional specificity. So here we look into the regional specificity, and again we see that if you look at the three sites, we 
see some overlap or I suppose lack of overlap. So some uh, the side with the biggest number of subjects drives the most of it. And interestingly enough, there is a really nice correlation in terms of the significance for individual white matter areas between site 2 and site 1, between site 3 and site 2, but no such correlation between site 1 and site 3. Again, because the samples are relatively small, they are, they are underpowered, and uh, that greatly diminishes our ability to detect that effect. Now, if we do it metagenetic analysis, everything becomes very, very simple. Because we basically have just one page of subjects, and there we can see that the side, the regions that show up at the top of the significance list are the same regions that typically pop out in the individual studies, and that's anterior corona radiata, genu of corpus callosum, inferior frontal occipital, superior corona radiata, so all the areas that tend to serve multimodal areas and tend to be affected in schizophrenia. On the other hand, uh, uh, areas that showed least impact in schizophrenia are the cortical spinal tract, which showed no effect. This is supposed to be superior frontal occipital rather than inferior frontal occipital. And antenate fasciculus, which kind of sort of shows very little effect. And regional mega analysis versus the site, we now see that uh, all three sites show about the same pattern of correlation where the ACR pops out as the most significant. Uh, Finding across the sites. And as I said, we had some overlap among sites. And so 35 subjects were imaged at site one and two in studies, and that those studies were done five years apart. And here you can see that the comparison between subjects was done following mega genetic uh, following mega normalization versus just plotting FA1 versus FA2. And while the, there is no significant difference in R squares, I personally like the one for the mega a little bit better because the because the normal normal transformation pulls the data slightly together. Well, so that's all for me. And now Habib will tell you more about forming those analysis now on the voxelized level.